everybody. And we've been um, had the agenda posted in three places on the website and emailed to interested parties so we can legally conduct this public meeting. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda tonight? Going once, going twice. Then we're going to start with the minutes from the. Um, Boy, it seems like a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. On Monday, December 17th of our um, select board meeting. And I uh, did not see any corrections to that. that I read them. To me. No, so I'd move we accept those. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Those. Okay. And we also have some minutes from a, a special meeting on Friday, December 21st. And I would like to. Um, it was basically discussing candidates for the town clerk treasurer position with Joanna stepping down. So I'd like to accept these minutes as typed up. All in favor? Aye. 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 And one last special select board meeting on Tuesday, January 8th, in which we met to appoint um, Julie Smith here as the town clerk and treasurer until the town meeting in March when she can be officially voted in. So welcome, Thank Julie. You. And Joanne's taking notes one, one last, <laughs> last time. So I'm going to accept these minutes. That's typed up. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you. And got that. And the special, uh, Special event tonight is Ray. You're on. Well, I was here at last meeting and mm -hmm. talking about uh, getting a generator to uh, back up our repeater. Yeah, you're going to power. reach out to some of the other towns and such. And yeah, see what uh, found out. Talk to one other town. We're trying to get a meeting together with like we have four times a year, and we have haven't had it yet uh, for this quarter. Uh, for Hancock and Granville, and that will also be Granville's medical end of their first response. And so we haven't had that yet. Uh, talked to you asked me to look for some grant money called Two Rivers Otter Otter Country Two Rivers. Uh, Pete Fellows, and we've talked twice, and he's trying to piggyback, find out about piggybacking a grant for Stockbridge and Rochester. He thinks we have a good chance because it's. Tri Town plus a first response in that. Um, didn't know what to say about the town crew because I wasn't sure if they wanted to get on it or not. And I told them that because they are not on the same repeater as we have. There's a separate one. And I've talked. The, the second repeater is okay. located in the same place? Yes. Yeah. And I've talked to a real estate lawyer about separating it. I mean, it's going to be not part of the real estate. If the real estate sold, the generator and the repeater comes out. Or a person buys it, he wants to rent space, he can do it. Uh, you know, hey. it's hard to know what people are looking for, income or not. Better than renting bedrooms, maybe. Um, so um, I did the two things that you kind of want to be the head for. So I've done it. I don't know if you feel any more for it or against it. Really, neither more for nor against it. Just looking for information and, and options. There's definitely not. Um, any money to, to lay out for it, so it hasn't no. come from, uh, from we, Grant to, you know, that right. kind of We deal. felt as if uh, they thought we'd have a good chance if we raised, if we campaigned for some money, mm -hmm. and I don't think we'd have a problem. Uh, we've raised money before for projects, yeah. and uh, we uh, didn't have any problem reaching out, and I think it would be probably the same this time. We've had mailings mm -hmm. in the past, yeah. and they've been 
very successful. Um, we're, this being a three town venture. Mm -hmm. Which oh. repeater does the school bus service live on? On with the road crew. On with the road crew. We raised 17000 on one of our members. Martha? Um, I just had a question for Ray. Um, when you talk to Pete Fellows, mm -hmm. um, the grant that he was said you might have a good chance at, is that a matching grant? Is that why he's talking about you had, um, if he, especially if you did a mail-in or, or not? If he said, he said if we could prove that, if we would go at it as a matching grant, we'd have another better chance. Okay. So he's kind of, you know, being tri-town was good. Okay. And if we wanted to go for matching, was better. Okay. Okay, thank you. I know there were reservations having it in a private residence uh, before. And Still is. And yeah, I understand. Um, I just want everyone to be aware that the options are not all that attractive in the valley for another location here. Uh, the town doesn't own any property where we could site it, and that would be, in my view, cost prohibitive anyways. You've got to get power to it. Right. So, and, uh, so uh, I don't see if, if that location is not acceptable, where else would we have that would be another private residence, most likely. And so um, I understand that's a concern. It would be for me as well. Um, but the fact is that we do need um, do need radio communications here. That's vital. And, uh, we're trying to see uh, a way that we can for future for the future keep it going, you know, and have it more reliable than having somebody go out in the middle of the night filling a generator um, because it's going to run out of gas, and we may not have. Medical service communications to Granville and, and anything like that. So, I mean, we understand it's a it's a commitment by the town in a not ideal circumstance. Okay. I have a question. I think I asked this last time, but there's no potential for Hawk up on the mountain. We went to them first. And they've got common land. But was that a while this ago year? or just recently? Or when we put it up, where we put it where it is now. Yeah. Okay. And we worked on them hard. And I went to the board myself because I knew the board. And I said, this is just a give it. And it was with two of them and the others just said no. And it was it was on it was going on common land. There's power there. And um, and the neighbor didn't have any problems with it. He actually wanted us to take the power from his house. So how long ago was this? Oh, mercy. Oh, quite a while, I guess. No. No. Well, it was at Windigo. It was at Windigo. And we, we didn't have the 30 days to get it out of Windigo. Okay. And we basically had it where it is now, just temporarily hooked up. And then we went to a better situation. And then we went to even a better situation now. Uh, uh, CBPS put us in a 60 foot pole. I think it's a 60 yeah. foot. Yeah, a 60 foot pole. Has it been 10 years? Probably. Yeah. It's no more than that. No. Um, what size gen set are we looking at here? 14 foot. No. Because the house has a 200 amp service. See. So there's. We're still going to, I know the repeater is actually located in Terry's house. In his garage. There's no thought about breaking that away into its own. No, he does not want another building on that in his property. Do we? Okay. I don't know if we talked about that back then or not. But I know he does not want another building on that property. Okay. So. Essentially, you're, you have to size, you're sizing the gen set to, to run the entire house. Yep. We are. Because it's a 200 amp service. Right, which I, I, I get that and I understand mm -hmm. all that. Um, but you're, you're essentially 
going to be running Terry's house. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was on, they had to run it the other uh, two Saturdays or two Sundays ago and ran it for six hours. And his concern with that is, again, I can't remember. Well, his generator, it's a construction generator yeah. and it's old. Yeah. And it's not good to run a construction generator uh, for a house. I mean, it's not good for your microwaves, it's not good for your refrigerators, water pumps, anything with a motor. And uh, with a different hat on, we've had people take construction generators and run their house, and the next thing they know, we got furnace problems, we have heat pump problems, water pump problems. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's normal. It's just not clean power. Well, it's due to the general unreliable operation of a small gas powered unit. Yes, yes. Um, yep. They don't, they don't tend to hold their frequency and voltage very well. No, they don't. You know, I, I get all that. But no consideration at this point to a battery backup. Uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah, we've got batteries now. Okay. There's, I think there's six batteries for hours. Mm -hmm. I think the road crew has two batteries. Don't quote me, I've, I've looked at them enough you think I would know. How long have, how long have the batteries been in place? Three years. They're deep cycle. Well, they're they're not deep cycle. They're 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 what you use for like a solar backup. Well, that would be that would be generally a deep cycle type yeah, battery. Yeah, yeah, but bigger than that. Right. Probably an L16 or something. Yeah. A large case. Yes. Okay. And and um, we used to just let those just run out. You know. How long did you You'd get about 12 hours, and then if you had a fire, so your repeater was coming on to use it. Um, we've had a couple of fires a few years ago that did all of a sudden go dead, you know. 12 hours, huh? Okay. We talked to, uh, back when it was Rinkers, we talked about putting more batteries in. He said it was a waste of our money. Can you give me a reason why? Mm, I don't think so. I remember meeting with him okay. in the old. It was in the old fire station. We met with him that time, talking about more batteries. And of course, if you ever listen to the guy, he's talking 90 miles an hour. <laughs> um, and he just said, "This is a waste of your time. I'm better off just to start a generator up and keep them charged." And I think he had changed, just changed those batteries, and that's the reason it came up about um, putting more in. Okay, those those batteries have a, a charger, right? It's connected to it. Yes, it is. Yes, they are. Yep. I find that all kind of surprising myself, but okay. All right, just trying to understand. No. Did you say you've been to another town? No, I'm not. not so we, I just in passing, Jock and I've talked about. Okay, it. but you've got a meeting coming up. You said with Hancock and Greenville, like a regular. Well, it's an annual meeting. We just haven't set it yet. But it's usually when, like. Oh, well, you do. We do. We do four a year. Oh, but so within the it, next month or two. Yeah, within within this month we're okay, going to do it. Okay, thank you. I also with with the rental fee that that we pay for the use of it this mm. can has now been opened so, mm. so technically the other towns should also share in that rental expense oh we know that we're and we've talked about it several different ways because mm -hmm. we've raised money together before we used to raise a lot of money back when it used to be old home days the money was split yeah. and uh not the alcohol, just the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, we kept all that. That was consumed. <laughs> <laughs> but and that was all split. That was a that was a tri town thing. We raised a lot of money that way. Mm -hmm. And and not that it's a, a a factor that I'm making a strong suggestion on, but there is a piece of property across the street from Terry's house that is for sale that does have power. Um, just the concept would be similar to the sewer cycle <coughs> when we bought the horse farm, you know, took off the sewer site property and then sold the house again. Mm -hmm. um, that
that's a possibility, but um, I'm, I'm not finding the money for, for that right now. <laughs> 50000 or something, you know. But it could be bought, and then a small section <coughs> could be set aside for that that the town owns. Right. And then the rest of the lot could be sold. Well, that's a bigger fish to fry. I mean, yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I was hoping that Mark would maybe be here to talk a little bit about the the first net, first net. the first mm -hmm. net system, coming in to what extent you know this this be become redundant or not in the future, and how yeah. soon how soon that would be. And well, I don't know, you know, that's that's the question, but not to say that you know we're right. not going to need this repeater very soon, but it's um, it could could become. Done it. Well, three uh, three years. I don't quote me exactly the time, but three years ago, Rinker came to me, Carl Rinker, and came to me because he was looking into putting a cell tower in there. Yeah. And in where? Right up by was it Ontario's property? Yeah, it's yeah. just up oh, the hill, and he yeah, was going to right. subdivide it. Yeah. And Carl was talking about maybe he might own it, and um, and he was going to take all this stuff over there, put it in a building. You know, he had a, I forgot now how big the generator was going in that was there. And of course, behind the chain link fence and, and the whole nine yards. And of course, you know, that didn't fly very far when I put the balloons in the air. Yeah, the way I understand it, and I, I don't know everything there is to know about first now, but um, it's an infrastructure that's going to be expanding under the, the guise of public safety. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the licensing process for cell towers, mm -hmm. um, I believe, is going to be easier because it's public safety. But I also understand that um, many of the cell sites will be much smaller. <coughs> to the, you know, they don't have to be huge towers and so forth because they're you're basically trying to cover the dead spots. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. I don't have all the information, on that, but it might be interesting if the fire department. And us would be interested in having a representative <coughs> to come out from AT and T to talk about first that what it can do, and where it's going. It might be of interest. I know that we we before we put it there, okay, because we already had it at Windigo, but Windigo didn't have much time to get it out, okay. Right. I mean, we had no time. Is that because of a change of ownership there? No, I think um, change of attitude maybe. And uh, Rob Darren had kept him pretty happy, and t Rob still he was shocked. And uh, but anyway, so we said we want to get up to seventy three. We just got it. We had no coverage on seventy three, none, any more than we had much coverage south of Route one hundred past my house and um, we thought you know with Hawk and everything 73 was real important to Rochester and so when Carl we called Carl Rinker because it was first north or what was that Radio North that had the whole setup at, at uh, Windigo and they were kind of spiraling downhill so we called Car uh, Carl and he came down and he says no problem. So he took you know, put a truck up on Bethel Mountain Road, and we took radios and we went up 73. We went up 125. We went all the way to Granville. We went through Granville North Hollow one night. We must have had about five or six radios, probably. And uh, and we said that was a spa, mm -hmm. and it looked like it on a piece of paper. Of course, the piece of paper is. Is flat and actually and it didn't work bad for 125 uh, Windigo could not go up 125 for some you know it just didn't <coughs> didn't go around that corner and I think they've got just about I think they got better coverage now on 125 than they had before well you know one of the things we're, we're dealing with like many towns is the incompatibilities of our radio systems. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You know, FirstNet, in theory, is 
supposed to bring that all together. So every first responder, whether it be fire, police, whatever, can communicate with one another mm -hmm. easily and send data, photos, videos if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but if we move on with what we need immediately, what you, what you were talking about, we still have our incompatibility issues. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it's just, uh, you know, we have to do what we have to do, right? But I think this is a, a well, little I, bit of a... I think it's just still an opportunity to explore. Right, I mean, right. We are in a yeah. dire situation. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just this, is, this is good, though, because this has raised consciousness for an issue that you want to resolve. However, this, yeah. this, this technologies that are coming into <coughs> being oh, yeah. as we speak, and maybe a little bit more research and is necessary before you commit. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, doesn't I mean you can't start raising money though. Yeah, either. no, I have it, money. Yeah. Right, but Absolutely. the only problem is I don't want to raise. I don't want to be the guy that talks everybody into raising money, and, and then 18 yeah. months from now going. <laughs> we're not going to give it back. We're not going to give it back, <laughs> and, and, I, and I will, and I don't want to bump into the guy on the street that just sent us three hundred dollars and say, "Well, how are you coming with your generator?" We'll just well, make sure your new truck's the same color. Yeah. <laughs> well, we whatever, have that. Whatever, see, whatever we go into, we go with it's going to cost. Well, oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. Next. But I want to. But I want to. I want to make <coughs> have sure. a goal there. there. I want to have yeah. a goal, and I want to okay. be able to show them what the goal is. I okay. mean. I mean, we, we did a yeah. fundraiser for a new porta tank, and we had a picture of the porta tank mm -hmm. there, and I'll never forget Norm Smith says, mm -hmm. where do you want the money? You know? <laughs> and that, and you gotta respect that. Because this town is good to the fire department, and we want we don't want to send them down the wrong road. Right, right, you don't want to take advantage of it. I do not want to take like advantage they, that, When, they, when they built that fire station, yeah. they were good to us. Yep. And, we, we and we want to respect them. I did a mailing once uh, for the fire station to, to uh, accessorize it. I think we pulled in, what, $55,000? I remember shipping a, a check to you folks from the credit union. Uh, but but that's, you know, that's how generous they are. But you know, I, this, is, this is not a Rochester situation. This is this is a valley, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and we're not we're not we're we're taking this opportunity to maybe do something better or do something right. Mm. Both. I can Those appreciate are the two that. <laughs> yeah. So let's all go in the, gonna, in the same We want to take care of the need just as you do. We right. Want to approach yeah. it. The only with the, the only thing knowledge. I can say about that is is we had a governor here a while ago uh, for what it's, what it's all about, and he says the going to have cell service in all four corners of the state. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess there's probably cell service in all four corners of the state. They're in the middle. They're, they're, not, they're, they're not, not in the middle. middle. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think you want to wait for that. <laughs> I don't mean to be a smart ass about no, it. But. No, no, and I don't know if the technology, because I don't understand that, if this yeah. is compatible with what our needs are as a fire department with a repeater that uh, has a you know frequency uh, versus a cell phone. I don't think they're the same, but no, it could not, be. Not even close. No, so, no. I mean, you could talk cell phone towers all you want. Our needs are specific. Yeah. And getting a license is not. It's not easy. Doesn't happen right around the corner either. Because we're so close to Canada. Yeah. So. I I missed the the last meeting where this was brought up, but is is this something that could be run off? Uh, solar power. Well, battery I looked into if we put those Tesla units in, those Tesla battery pack units, yeah. and I was told they didn't think they'd go long enough. If if it was like the last time, not the last time, the next to the last time, they lost power for almost five days. Even with even with solar to the Tesla. Well. Still, you're going to have to put a panel up there. I don't know how no, receptive you, you, the owner's going to be. Well, you could definitely make that work. I mean, we have an old Coverage Co. system out here right now that's solar power. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not all that dissimilar from what you're trying to do in right. terms of yeah. electronics. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
um, but it takes up a fair amount of room because yes. you, you got some <clears throat> photovoltaic and, array out there. And you'd, and you'd have to go um, with a bigger array. I mean, that would be a, a good way to go. I mean, if you, could, if you have the space, that's the way to do it these days. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, having another mouth to feed, and I'm referring to a genset, a generator, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just more maintenance, more fuel, all that stuff. Well, and you're going to have gas to... You're going to have propane. This is about it's going to be propane an power. hour. Uh, I said, uh, one, one point, Steve Martin told me uh, 14. Uh, he looked it up for me. I know exactly what unit you're looking at. Yeah, but it burns about 1.7 gallons an hour. Right. That That's probably 1.7. That's probably at full capacity. Yes. Yeah. But that's what his chart shows. Yeah. Yeah, he should, you won't run it. He no, be but, running anywhere but near that. you know, I was asking him what, because I asked, I uh, asked uh, Brookfield, and they didn't know what it was going to be. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. But I knew Steve knows. <laughs> <laughs> Just on top of that data sheet. Yeah, right. right. Um, the only reason I asked was I know, you know, the Forest Service is moving their repeater off Philadelphia right. uh, with one up in Corporation which um, covers all Route 73 better than it's ever been covered. I, I don't know how far up toward 125, but they're also proposing a repeater up on Braintree Mountain. And I don't know if there's a possibility of co-locating. I mean, there's, he raises the example that repeater up on Philadelphia Pete is solar powered. Mm -hmm. It's been there a long time. Why are they moving it? Or are they, they want to make it too? Because, because Philly's in the designated wilderness area. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't want those bears to warm up to it. Mm -hmm. Are you going to helicopter that out? Or? Uh, uh, no, it's coming out on uh, horseback and human power. It grabbed towards the top. It went in half of it, well, not half of it, a portion went in in the back of this ass. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't hauling it out. <laughs> Downhill, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's uphill to get there. Yeah, no, I, I hiked up to it. So, I, I don't want to take any more of your time up, but I've done what no, you asked me to do. No, the, thank you. And, uh, uh, you know, we're just as concerned as you are. We just want to do it what we feel is the most up-to-date, modern, efficient way. Mm -hmm. So a little a little bit more research, I think, would be prudent, that's all. Yeah, it's going to have to be, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to start, I mean, we just updated our radio system a lot of money into it. I mean, well, whenever we had to split the bands, whenever they split the bands, what was that? That's four or five years ago. We had to put all the radios in, and we had no choice on that. So we, you know, we went, and it was a good thing. But perhaps you guys could reach out to this other system you're talking about for AT&T and see how compatible that might be for what our needs would be and see if it's even right. even, a, even an option. Well, I'm not familiar with it at all. Uh, I will tell you. I didn't know we I didn't know we had something else coming up. The, I mean the only thing that is questionable about the first uh, first net first net system is is coverage because the mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure is not completed yet. Mm -hmm. As far with, with that aside, the, the capabilities far, far exceed what you have now. I mean, it's unbelievable, okay, because you have the full uh, text talk. Push to talk. You have push send to talk photos. options. You have, you can send videos, you can send pictures instantly to any first responder, whether it be police, fire, mm -hmm. the town, the highway department, and other, and other towns as well. Find I know on 73. Units. On mm -hmm. 73, the state police used our radios yeah. to talk to dispatch. You got GPS you can use. So you and can find where your trucks are if you're close by on the way, where they are. Well. And, these, and these cell phones are, are designed for a first net. They are heavy duty, weatherproof, ruggedized phones. Okay, designed for this purpose. Um, and I guess. They become your cell phone. They well. become your cell phone, right. Currently we, we use, we currently we use, currently we use, 
Right. Exactly. You know, I mean, let's do it. Currently, we use the state police for dispatching purposes. Right. And I don't know how that plays into well, it. Because they wanted to get out of it. We, we, hmm. that was that five years ago, we had to beg them to stay on. There was a movement they wanted to get out of, what? of dispatching us. They didn't want us, they wanted us to take it over ourselves. Take it over ourselves. They didn't want the cost. They didn't want the, okay. and I mean, it was, it was scary. I mean, oh, we, yeah. we didn't know what we were going to do because Rinker was getting out of it. We'd have to go to somebody like uh, uh, Central Mont and Rutland. They dispatch a few fire departments, but not many. And I, I've been through them um, for some companies we do work. But that's for. not a consideration now. They but haven't that, they made finally, any about they that. They finally said that they were to go back to doing it or stay doing it. What do you use for your business? Oh, we use Central Mont. But we don't use them for dispatching, like CV Oil does. Mm -hmm. So, is the board, if they're, they're um, he's going to do more research and he's also going to talk to Hancock and Granville at that meeting. And are, are you, so is the board going to be looking to do more yeah. research too? Yeah. Yeah. But you're going to be talking to FirstNet about their, yeah. what they are what they do. I think do. it's worthwhile. Okay. No, I mean, anything's worthwhile. I mean, but we are where we are is one of the the deepest folds in the mountains right. around here. Oh, no, we are. And, and yeah. what they say they can do everywhere. They gotta come here. We know it doesn't always exactly. apply here. Yeah, you know, right. So, um, and it could be ten years from now. Right, so, right. right. Yeah. Well, no, exactly. There is. A, it is going to take a while to get the infrastructure in place. So, the system you have now is most well, most likely going to be the one you live with for a while. Mm -hmm. And if so, I think if his generator dropped dead tomorrow morning, that would be the end of that, of him pointing a generator. Um, I thought that that generator actually belonged to. No, I think that's his generator. That's his generator. That's his generator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone mentioned that it was the generator that was given to the fire department from Home Depot during Irene. No, that didn't work. <laughs> that never did work. And any, any you want it? Where is it? What's that? Where is it? This is in the fire station. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Hmm. Can the highway guys use What's it? That? I think they're hooked up now, though, at the town garage. Yes. During that last outage, didn't they, they have hooked a, up for the whole unit outside? Yeah, they wouldn't want okay. this one. <laughs> no, this is, I think. Uh, oh, so it's just a little thing that they think 1,500 watts. Okay. Yeah. And we. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I nice, again. Nice yeah. gesture on yeah, It was a good yeah. gesture. Yeah. We thought it was a great thing. We were going to put it on one of the trucks to, you know, for, for lights, work lights and stuff, but never even <laughs> didn't do that. <laughs> and we couldn't give it back to them. Thank you for Thank you. Okay, thank you. Keep us all covered. And you do the same for us. Yeah. 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 Ye
uh, start that process because if you remember also, uh, one of the things I need to do is, is finish up some design work, final design work for the garage, mm -hmm. which is pretty minor. And the grant that the grant that might be available, there's two of them actually that would be matching grants. Um, we would cover a final design. It would be a design and build essentially. Mm -hmm. um, the total cost was somewhere in their neighborhood of seventy seventy two thousand dollars. That was the least expensive of the three. Right, correct? and one that also could have the biggest impact for the least amount of money um, expended. So the two grants. One of them is a clean water block grant. Um, which was the same funding that was used for White River Partnerships um, uh, uh, Wing Farm Road. Wing Farm. Yeah, the last project was also Clean Water. It's a new grant program, fairly new grant program from the state. There's money left over from this current round, so they're rolling it over into 2019. And so we have a effectively a, almost a shovel, what they call shovel ready project, which they would might very likely be willing to fund. That would need to be matched, and uh, the January 23rd date is um, a National Forest Service Foundation grant that would fund the balance. And then, then as I said, there would just be a match from the town, which would be in kind, things that the, um, the road crew would be able to do. government functioning? Well, <laughs> that's, that's always a question. Um, as far as we know so far, the, the deadline is still the 23rd. Okay. I haven't heard anything about that. Could very well be that the grants get submitted and then they sit there for the right. most so they, so I'm back. <laughs> But nevertheless, that is the, the date we know about. So she was just anxious to hear if we could make a decision. And the decision is not go, f well, the decision is pretty much, yes, this is something you would like to pursue if the funding can um, you know, be 100% between those two. Mm -hmm. um, so that she has the time to put together the grant and get it submitted. Could have you noticed anybody else down there looking at the building? I remember during our presentation there was some discussion about maybe going to the front of the building instead of the back with the the pipe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah, something that they would be They have to do some soil tests and various other things to sort of determine, you know, and make okay. sure like there's but no that rubble suggestion underneath was there. Taken into, into yeah, that's all part perfect. of what they're nest next round of the investigation would be mm -hmm. if we wanted to move forward, which, you know, they're prepared to do if, if they get there. Well, we can't be using pistols right now. Yes, yes, that's right. <coughs> we'll be in the spring. Oh, that's not if I don't that bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> you don't necessarily have to decide now if you want to have, you know, if you have the time to, you know, schedule a special meeting before the 23rd to get into the details a little more. I do have more notes from the phone call that I was a part of, um, which I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to put together today because I was working on something else, um, just so you can have a little more information before you make up your mind. As long as we don't need to do an audit. <laughs> right. No. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing, and I'll send you an email in the next couple of days and see, yeah. you know, okay. let me know what you want to do there. Um, the next thing is the Vellamont grant. Um, there are some documents they have asked you to sign so they can submit the grant. Um, they're kind of pro forma. I have them all uh, marked here. Resolution. This one is to designate a public agency to represent you. Um, the other is a contract um, because apparently Two Rivers Ottaquichi would be involved as the grant <coughs> administrator and we would be the subgrantee. So that's what this is. It just came in today. I did not have a chance to read it. It's pretty poor, pro forma also, but you might want to be able to read through it. And there's a place for, let's see, just do needs to sign this one if you decide to do that. And then this last one is something called uh, it's a Vermont Community Development Program requirement that you indicate as a town that there are certain municipal policies and codes that are part of our standard policy list. And I'm not sure that we have all of these, um, uh, but you do have to say that the town has a policy regarding equal employment opportunities, uh, fair housing, we probably do have, but I don't know exactly what's in that book. Um, no discrimination on the basis of race, color, et cetera. Uh, no use of excessive force. 
Uh, there's an anti-lobbying provision. There's a code of ethics that you're required to have. You have to have a drug-free workplace. Uh, there has to be monitoring of a sub-recipient sub in the event we have one, such as Park House with a sub-recipient. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, now have a better idea of what those that requirements means. are. Yeah. And finally, something that protects whistleblowers. So I have a feeling that maybe not all of these are in our current policies. If you sign this, you are saying that either you have it or you will have it yeah, by the time the grant comes through. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to point that out to you before you actually just sign it. And there's a place you're going to have to create all those policies, too. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's the point. Yeah. Right. So that's something. Um, so this is just a planning grant. Yeah. Correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, well, these, any of these policies that we don't currently have are probably things that we're gonna eventually need to have anyway. Right. So any funding yeah. from the Vermont Community Development yeah, so I folks or yes, yeah, right. what they expect or what they doing. So we will we will hear from the Vellamont Trail project people again. I assume so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I still had a question about um, uh, our services when our when, when our fire and ambulance services are needed. How how would we be connected with it? Would they be doing something to support that? Or? Well, it's a good question. I think maybe asking Angus for starters, mm -hmm. about, you know, whatever questions you have of that nature, you could tell them to start thinking about it if they haven't done it. Um, so the only last thing I have is there was a set of minutes from a previous meeting I wasn't at. I don't even know if it was the last select board meeting or, or another one, but I saw something about, there seemed to be a misunderstanding about, thanks, um, about the bus shelter and it seemed to be the misunderstanding seemed to be that there was an expectation from the town that the school would be helping to pay for a bus shelter if there were students to be using it. And I want to just no, make sure that everyone knows yeah. that's not the case. So this we have was money. But no. Okay. All right. Fine. Because yeah. we do have the money still in our park and ride grant, ten thousand dollars for. Yeah. Um, and no, I'm just waiting we were, for we were the stagecoach. Expanding on that if we were to have the school children waiting. Right for the school bus, right. but, but that I, mean, I don't see the school taking that avenue. No, okay. Yeah. Well, that uh, I don't know if that's up to the school or if the parents decide where they would like their kids to be waiting for. They won't get it figured out till probably next year. Not this probably mm -hmm. not the okay. next school year. Right. So that is still something that will be in the offing once uh, we're waiting now for stagecoach to replace a staff person. Um, who handles this sort of thing and we'll renew the conversation yep. mm -hmm. see where it ends and they might have some input on the design yeah yeah yeah, yeah probably yeah. Um, ultimately I think it'll be the town's decision but um, yeah. I'm sure they'll have okay. suggestions for handicap accessible right. or whatever yeah. the bus needs so that yeah. you know yeah. people of all ages and abilities can make use of it get on the bus yeah get it. okay so why don't we keep that cool. all together and on the desk, I'll be back in tomorrow afternoon. Were you able to get Mike the information he was looking for? Yep, we can get that one. Yep. Great. Great. All right. We've got nobody here from the library or the constable, so have a night off. I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> I just came because I haven't been in a long time. Yeah. How is the sand pile holding up? Very poorly. Mm -hmm. Shrinking. Yeah. They're trucking some today and we're going to truck some tomorrow. Are you about half? Is it about half gone? I don't know where is that? Over half. Over half. Where are you going? Where is the sand coming from? Well, we're going to get a little from DNF and a little from Florence. But oh. nobody, nobody has any. Mm -hmm. We're trucking out of Champlain right now. We're done good. Well, you should know that the UPS guy is thrilled with the roads this year. Very happy with the roads. 
Nobody's driveway. That's the last one to get sanded. I don't see it. Tired of it. Ashes. Yeah. All right, well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, see what happens as we can. Mm. Yeah, right. That's a. Uh, Got a liquor license here from the um, Maple Soul, one for the business proper and one for um, out on the porch. So I'd uh, move we approve, approve these. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. chance to pull together all the background information that you would need in order to go ahead and make changes in the class four mileage. We're on, it's not due till February 20th. So well, I'll, I'll see what I can pull together. But one interesting thing I found is this Pine Road actually starts in the Bingo Road, goes across the new bridge up the hill and then bears to the right and according to the uh, highway map, it ends in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so I came in here to look for why they discontinued the old portion of Bingo Road that was north of Bingo Brook. There's nothing in the roads record, and if you go to look at the select board minutes, there are no minutes. There's a whole section, uh, a period of time where the select board minutes are missing. Huh. Isn't that interesting? From, from what period of time? What did you In the late 30s to the early 40s. Right, my time. Right, uh, <laughs> right when the change was made from the, the, late 30s. the north side of the Bingo Road there's a Forest Service agreement when you know that that led to the establishment of the Bingo Road being on the south side of Bingo Brook, but there's no um, why they discontinued one portion that's north of Bingo Brook and not the whole thing. But then going through the maps one by one. The maps indicate that that Pine Road terminated at, there's a little uh, gravel bank out there, sand pit. Yep. And that's, that's where the map shows, but the mileage is in, in, inaccurate. So I think, I mean, to me it's pretty clear they intended to keep that as a town road as, to access that sand pit and then discontinue the rest of it. but. You can't find that actual discontinuance. At least I haven't been able to find it. Well, you know, it's just, it's interesting that the minutes from the select board meeting that we need to figure this out disappeared. Well, it, it, 
it's a whole period. It isn't just. Five years. It isn't. Just well, I mean, yeah, years. but it was over a whole period that the minutes are gone, and it was during that period that uh, there was the flood. There was the uh, land transfer from my deed to you know for the, the bingo road on this side of the brook, my side of the brook, and that was all like around. Uh, Right, 38. 38, yeah. Well, when was the flood? That was 27. The big flood was 27. Is that the big one now? Yeah. <laughs> it used to be big. It used to be the big one. <laughs> but anyway, that, I mean, that's where I am with my research right now. So maybe I'll get together. If I don't, then I'll get it together and next February we'll be having the same discussion. So Bruce, the information you're getting together, is that for that state road inventory report that they were talking about? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Town road mileage. Okay, thank you. And, and you're saying that the, the Pine Gap Road, Pine Road? The Pine Road is dark in the middle. Well, most of the junctions you go to the center line of the road. So it starts in the center of the bingo road, goes across the bridge, up the hill, and bears right. The Pine Gap Road starts at the top of the hill and goes left. Which is also, uh, what's the other name for that? I mean, what was the name before there? There was a farm. Wyman Road. Wyman Road, yeah. The guy that did the survey up there said it's the Wyman Road. Well, call it what you want. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> you know. Go by the town road number. Yeah, same deal. But it starts not at the bingo road, it starts on the north side of the bingo brook. So. All right. More to follow. More to follow. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Or possibly some of those roads could have been thrown up. saying that they were well right my neck uh, what I plan to do next is go to the state and say um, do you did you receive justification in, in, from Rochester changing the mileage for that road and what is it what is it? so you know the select board should have submitted you know, some reason that they dropped part of that original bingo road. And the state may have that record. So. All right. Well, on that note, I think we'll hit the road home. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Uh, Janice. Oh. oh, Janice is a, It's a new year. Um, the American Legion has put out flags for a number of the years. The town purchases them. I personally picked up all seven cemeteries worth of flags this fall. I saved this selection so you can see what happens when we reuse flags and don't put out new ones. Um, I've been told that it needs to be in the budget, so I don't know if you need to be aware of it before March. That is a rough estimate of what you need. Uh, Leslie Bowen and myself have more or less taken over our father's jobs in the American Legion and put them up and pick them up. So the wood lawn, you got 12? I put <coughs> the wood lawn into the main one and the new one. Yes. And you got to realize there's a lot of World War II, Korea, mm -hmm. and Vietnam mm -hmm. vets that are passing away now. So the new part's got, there's, there's two? The new part has roughly 40. The main part has roughly 200. A lot oh, okay. of these, and that's the, right. the cemetery that's the most open. Mm -hmm. If you put a flag out that looks basically like this, without that tear after the first windstorm, that's this is what happens. Yeah. I have destroyed almost all the old flags. We saved a lot last year. Yeah. I got a lot of phone calls. Mm -hmm. So you estimate these flags to be one year old? Yes. Okay. Janice, do you leave them out? Um, Around no. no. Well, I have two. I have one at the base at the bench, and I did not get Tupper Farms. Tupper Farm has just one flag. Okay. Um, but no, we put them up in May, so they're up there by Memorial Day, and I personally have them down by Veterans Day, but most of them are picked up by September and October. So you're doing this under the auspices of the 
No, American Legion has American gone Legion, after I'm sorry, years. Excuse me. And the cemetery itself doesn't do anything like that. That's not yeah. in their budget. Yeah. Yeah, and he did want to see. And the town, the the town purchases the flag, and okay. it's always been the American Legion's responsibility okay. to do it. Thank you. I just want to make sure I got it right. Thanks for the inventory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can you hand that list over to the person that owns the hardware store. They would love to take care of this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't say she never got me. So they would be, they, you, you'd be expecting to put the tickets up by Memorial Day? Um, Is that your target? I will be speaking, the town clerk's office has helped us for the last three years as our fathers have passed away or health prevented them from doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they have always gotten to us. Um, 